How's everybody doing? Good? Doing great, yeah. All right, well, we're, uh, you know, we're kind of in the stage of first wave of free agency, move through here and um, feel good about the guys we added last week. And, you know, there's still free agency is ongoing process and we'll continue to work through that here over the coming weeks. Um, certainly uh, busy with draft prep right now. Um, the pro day circuit is off and running. Our scouts are out and about um, collecting the pieces of information that they can get there. Um, you know, and our, our coaches are busy with their evaluations and, and um, you know, they're doing their Zoom calls and, and getting a chance to meet with the players. And, you know, we'll, uh, we'll continue to hack through that process. Got about a month to go here, um, give or take. I'd have to look at the calendar to be exact. But, you know, feel good about where we're at, both uh, free agency and the draft, and uh, really kind of open it up to you guys if, uh, if we can answer any questions for you. When it, when it comes to the free agents that you guys have, so it seems like there's a type in terms of age range and, and the amount of games they've been able to play the last couple of years. Is that, is that a big part of the equation of what you guys are looking at when you're adding players? Yeah, Darren, I think, you know, first and foremost, it starts with, um, with the tape and how we, how we see players fitting with, uh, with our group and in our scheme. And, you know, I think any time that we can add somewhat, you know, uh, younger players in that, in that age frame, uh, durability being a big part of it. I mean, there's, there's no, big, uh, you know, one of the biggest abilities is durability, being able to be out there every week. Um, so, you know, I think being able to check those boxes is certainly positives and, you know, also guys that we can continue to move forward with, you know, and, and uh, you know, whether, whatever that magic age is, um, but, you know, still have a, a good chunk of their career left going forward. So, you know, we're excited that, that most, if not all of the guys that we sign fit that bill, um, you know, so not only that can help our 2024 roster, but moving forward into the, the coming seasons, uh, also a positive. What's your process when Monty gives you an infusion of talent like he has over the last week and a half? Win games. Um, no. Uh, yeah, we got to figure out, we got to get him on the grass, figure out, you know, what, what Monty just said. You know, we've, when you watch the tape, um, you know, there's a role and a vision for each player that we, that we sign up. Um, and then it's up to us to kind of integrate them, catch them up to speed, how we do things, all those things like that. And then ultimately go out and it's a production business to help us win. Um, but super excited about, you know, the, the character of the guys that we brought in, um, obviously the tape. And, um, you know, as we move forward, just figure out what's best for us and them and uh, coach them up and have them play good ball for us. For each of you, what's, what, where's the defense stand now as it did compared to two? Go ahead, Monty. Well, I mean, I don't, you know, unfortunately, Bob, I don't think we'll be able to completely answer that until uh, opening week of the, the 2024 season. But, you know, I think, I think we, honest, we wanted to add competition. We wanted to add depth. Um, I think we were able to do that. Um, you know, added some pieces to the D-line, uh, to the secondary, to the linebacker room. So, you know, I think that any time that we make a move to add somebody to the team, um, it's going to be with the mindset of adding competition, adding, you know, uh, raising, uh, raising the expectations of what we can do. So, you know, to sit here and say, hey, you know, we, we think we've achieved this, you know, we don't know. Like, we, we're, it's going to come out. Uh, once, once we get out there on the field during the season. But, you know, we're excited about the guys we added. We think they're going to help us. And ultimately, it's going to be uh, on, up to them, up to us, up to us as an organization to put them in a position to be successful. Aside from the two main defensive linemen, what did you see in Tonga that uh, had added him kind of an under-the-radar type guy? Yeah, so Tonga, I mean, he's he's big. That's the first thing. I mean, I, it's the first time I met him, man. He's he's a thick dude. So you know, um, you know, he he ended up playing. He's played quite a bit of ball here uh, in the last couple of years. Um, you know, really finished the season strong last year for Minnesota. So again, you know, I don't think um, you know whether it's the offensive line or the defensive line. I don't think you can ever have enough depth or competition up there on e each side of those lines. So you know, another guy to come in here and, and compete and uh, see if he can carve out a role for the team. Jonah Williams, an offensive lineman who's played on both sides. You still have that versatility with Paris. When you sign a player with that versatility, is that signing with the intention of knowing which side he's going to be, or is that more fluid? You just know he can play both. 
Yeah, I think any time a player, uh, you know, whether it's Jonah or anybody that we sign, um, brings versatility, I think that's a great word to use, uh, it, it just increases the possibility. So, um, you know, whether Jonah lines up on the left side or the right side or Parrish, you know, wherever he goes, um, you know, no matter what position a player plays, the more they can do, the more value they bring, bring to the roster. So, you know, I think it's a it's a good problem to have. And, you know, we'll, we'll see once everybody gets out on the grass, we'll see where everybody fits best. Um, but but the more you can do, um, the more excited uh, and the more value you can bring to the roster. Let's let's talk about this one for a minute here, because you guys are going to ask me 132 times. Um, we will know who's playing where the Friday before we play Week One. So when you guys ask me where is this guy playing, who's the starters, what are we doing, blah blah blah, I don't know, guys. So we'll we'll see, we, you'll see Week One. That's how we'll do that. What do you guys like about the Mac Wilson senior signing? Violent, violent, high football character, can play multiple positions, um, fast, smart, tough, excited to be here. JG, Sean Murphy Bunting is going to be entering the room. Even though he's 26, he's kind of going to be one of the older veterans in that room. What's your early message to him for that regard? Yeah, go do your thing. You know, we signed you for a reason, BU. Um, you know, obviously he's played um, on very good defenses, won a Super Bowl, uh, has played left and right, played inside. He's a guy that I've done a lot of work on. It's kind of funny, kind of comes full circle now that we sign him. But when I was two teams ago, did him when he was coming out. And and um, so it was cool to get him in the room. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's uh, a really good player. He's played at a high level. He's a versatile player. And just like Mac, you know, high football character, loves ball. He's going he's gonna to love it here. He said that you guys see what he sees in himself. Yeah. And you said all the work he'd done previous on that. And, mind you can maybe talk about this too. Is it a product of watching the film and then marrying that with what Drew and Jonathan and Nick do schematically? Absolutely. I mean, I think that's a huge part of, you know, we're not just um, – you know, one thing that we're, we're, we're intentional about the players that we add. You know, it's, um, it's not a, a case where we're just going out and signing players and, and picking them out of a hat. I mean, the players that we are selecting for us, whether it's the draft or free agency, are, are guys that we feel have a good fit in what we're going to ask them to do. I mean, there's, there's plenty of players, whether it's this draft cycle or a free agency, that they're good players, but they maybe their skill set lends itself to a different scheme. So, and that's fine. That's going to happen every year. Um, but you know, the guys that we ultimately, the guys that we ultimately add to this roster are guys that we believe can do the what we ask them to do in our scheme. Uh, that's a, that's an important part of any person that we add to this program. Third-year quarterbacks change teams this offseason. You guys got one in Desmond Ritter. Why did you make that move, Monty and Jonathan? What do you think of Ritter as a quarterback? Let me start there. He, uh, you know, the skill set, big guy, arm talent, mobility, uh, smart, plays fast. That's what jumped off the tape um, to me. And I know we didn't plan, but prepping for him, too. Um, you know, talking to some people that you know, you know, what the character of the guy is. Um, so yeah, I thought he was a really good addition to add what we're looking for there. Yeah, and really, um, Bob, you know, as with any anybody that we're at, is we're we're seeking to add competition to the roster. And so, um, you know, I think it, adding Desmond to the room with with Kyler and Clayton um, gives us you know three players that that are going to have a, a good battle. And um, you know, skill set wise, they they're all shaped a little bit differently, but I think they all uh, schematically can do a lot of the similar things. Um, you know, Desmond has played a lot of ball over his two years. He's started, I believe, 17 games. Um, you know, so he's got some experience, and that's, uh, you know, there's no, no substitute for experience, especially at the quarterback position. So, you know, the opportunity ad came up to add him, and uh, we were excited to do so, and, and, you know, excited to see how that competition plays out here in the spring and then into the summer. What are your thoughts on Marvin Harrison Jr. not doing this pro day? and the combine apparently wanting to concentrate on actually preparing for football rather than the drills and stuff that goes on in those events. Yeah, and I think, you know, with all of these, you know, all the spring prep and the draft prep, I think that's really a, a personal decision that, uh, you know, that players have to make. Um, you know, hey, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, the more good information that we can have in the draft process, the better. Um, but, you know, it's not going to be the first time that we don't 
that a player doesn't check off every box for the, the spring process. It won't be the last time. Um, you know, so, you know, it's uh, in Marvin's case, it's his decision, what he thought was best for him. And so, you know, we respect that and we'll continue our evaluation process, no, not only on him, but uh, every draft prospect. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll evaluate the best we can with the information that we have. There was a report that he asked teams that he met with at the combine whether there was anything they wanted to see or for him to take part in the pro day. Can, can you confirm that in your discussions with him? Uh, I'd have to go back to I don't I, I have a tough time remembering yesterday. Um, yeah, I don't I'm not sure if if that's exactly how it went, but yeah, we talked about we talked about what his plans were for the spring, and he he kind of informed us what his plans were, and so you know we'll we'll adjust accordingly. Um, but yeah, yeah, we had a we had a good productive meeting with Marvin at the combine. Um, so yeah. In the last twelve to thirteen months, culture was a big part, a big word that both you touched on shortly after you were hired here. Truly every single free agent that spoke with the media said something along the lines of something is brewing here, something is different, and you can feel it. I'll start with you, JG and Monty, if you want to tag on. I mean, what are your thoughts when you hear about how quickly the competitiveness and the culture that has been here is spreading around the league, or did you gather any of that from your discussions with them? Um, no, I think, you know, when they walk in the building and the people that they meet and how the people act, I think that's what they're saying, right? So that's, you guys have heard me say all the time, culture is who you got in your building and how we behave, how we act on a daily basis. Um, so I think walking into our building, every, every building's different, you know, how it's set up and the people in place. And you, there's more than one way to do things, which we all know. It's just how we do things here, you know what I mean? I think um, certain guys take to that. They like that. Um, so uh, it, they'll, they'll sing a different tune after the first week of OTAs when I get after them all. But uh, it, uh, it's, it'll be fun. They want to be coached. They want to have fun. They want to improve. They want to grow. They want to be around guys that are like-minded to them that want to do those things too. Um, they want to know, is this okay? Is this not okay? And, and, you know, our guys will tell them we have no problem saying this is okay, this is not okay, you know, for the betterment of the team um, to make sure that we all keep in alignment because winning teams are aligned. So they realize that. Some of these guys are coming from really good football teams. They understand that. So they want to make sure that box is checked from my standpoint, um, which we always have to continually do and improve that part. Um, but I think it's checked. Completely set, and if so, could you tell us how many projected first rounders you see and your team sees in this draft? Uh, no, because you guys are interrupting my draft prep right now, and uh, I should be up doing working on the board right now. Uh, no, Ouch. Uh, no, <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, we're we're still in the middle. We're still in the middle of uh, working through our board right now. Um, you know, and you know to. Uh, answer your question. Um, you know, we don't we don't necessarily talk in those terms, Bob, about how many first rounders there are. I mean, I mean, in the end, like I, I, I'm not quite sure what that really means. Like, what's a first rounder? What's not a first rounder? Um, you know, we're just trying to evaluate. Um, we're trying to evaluate what a player is, what his player's role will be, to what level, um, and we talk in those terms. You know, and so. Um, you know, to say I couldn't, even if I wanted to give you a number of how many first rounders were in this draft, I, w I wouldn't know how to do that. Um, so uh, all I can say is that we're, we're rolling through draft prep right now. We got about a month left. Um, we'll be in good shape here. Um, we're, we're on target. Uh, you know, Dave Sears and Rob Kissel are upstairs. They're, they run a pretty, pretty strict schedule for me and uh, keeping us on task. But we're going we're gonna to be in good position when it comes to the draft. Hopefully I see it before you, Bob. <laughs> Hopefully I see it before you do. <laughs> yeah. Sure you wasn't on DJ. Uh, it was brutal. Yeah, it was brutal. Um, you know, listen, DJ, we, we got to spend uh, a year with DJ, and, um, you know, we're, we're both better for it. Our team is, is better for it. Um, you know, just really, really unfortunate. Really unfortunate with the, the timing. Of, of the injury, um, you know, obviously for us as a football team and obviously for DJ um, on a personal level. So, um, you know, the, 
the, the, the salary cap and, and the way things are set up and the way contracts work, it just it put uh, a very tough situation. So um, I, I can't say enough about what I feel, uh, how I feel about DJ as a football player and even more so as a person, just being around him and uh, his energy and, and uh, the leadership that he brought to this team. Um, we're certainly going to miss him. Um, you know, and I just, I just hope nothing but the best for him and his recovery and his rehab. And you know, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen down the line? You know, like uh, uh, would have zero hesitation to bring DJ back. Um, just unfortunately, the the worst part about this league is injuries. And um, you know, it just it just struck a guy that that meant a lot to this organization uh, and to this team. It just it just hit him at the wrong time. Yeah. How is that handled now with him? He's not a part of the team. Yeah, and there will be plenty of resources available to DJ um, that he'll be able to, to do his rehab and get him in a position, and, and he'll have everything that he needs um, that, you know, it'll just, he'll be on his own instead of with the team. On re-signing LJ, pretty limited number of game reps to look at. What did you see, whether that was from early on in the season when he was playing before the injury in the offseason that you wanted to bring him back? You want that one? Yeah. Um, you know, our vision for LJ is is a good one. I think he can be a really good player for us and impact the game in a positive way um, and be a part of a really good defense. You know, he's a versatile piece. He can rush the passer, and he can play different multiple modes on the D-line uh, in the run game. So, um, you know, that was a tough injury when he went down as early as he did. You know, it's, it's, it's part of the game. but. I mean, he was, you know, a starter. Um, so excited to get him back. He's excited to be back, and uh, excited to pour everything that he has into this year and and you know play good football for us. Where's your offensive line at? Each of you or whoever wants it. Now you've added depth at interior, center, starting tackle. It looks like it's pretty much picked up a lot, um, and I'm still you're still looking for one of the draft. I'm assuming, but. Where do you think that room is? Right? I would say, like all the rooms, Bob, never a finished product. You know what I mean? So we'll, every day we try to do things a little bit better and make our team better. Um, and however that comes about, it comes about. So love the additions, love the guys coming back. I'm excited for the competition that's going to happen. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see as we keep going what happens here. But I uh, feel really good about that room. You guys know I love that room um, and, and excited about the people that we added. Signing a handful of guys to three-year deals as opposed to last year where we only saw really one to two-year deals, what was the reasoning behind the tweaked approach? Yeah, and I think, um, you know, I think a couple reasons. I mean, one, we had, we had cap space, right? So we had, had room to, uh, to work and to maneuver. And, uh, you know, and I think um, another reason is, you know, I think our team is at a different stage than it was last year at this time. And so, um, you know, I think, as I talked about earlier, um, wanted to get a group of guys that we could add to the core that we already have that we could, you know, move forward with and not only be part of the 2024 team, but the 2025, 2026 team and beyond. So, you know, I think that happens that's a product of a lot of things not only cap space but uh who the free agents are that you're signing um you know age durability are you comfortable committing to players um over a, a longer period of time and so i think a lot of those things went into it um and ultimately made us feel comfortable going to those two and three year deals that was different than what we did last year you said in indy that you hadn't gotten any action on the fourth overall pick nobody's Called you yet? Have you, have you seen any more action with that? There's been a little bit more action, Bo. Yeah, a little bit more action. So, um, you know, I'd say those phone calls are starting to pick up a little bit. Um, you know, I would say they'll probably continue uh, into next week when we go down to Florida for the owners' meetings. Um, you know, I think most teams are in a similar spot to us and um, starting to finalize their boards, and uh, the, the, the pro day piece is kind of the final on-field piece for evaluation evaluation purposes. Um, you know, so I, I would imagine some of those conversations will continue to pick up. Um, you know, but honestly, I, they probably will not get real serious until we get right up until the, the week of the draft, similar to last year. So um, 
they have definitely picked up, um, but I would expect that to continue here for the next month. In general, if there's a draft day trade or even on the clock, how much of that groundwork is laid beforehand? Yeah, and I would say there, are, there is a considerable amount of it that is laid beforehand. Um, but with everything, um, you know, it, it kind of has to wait to see. There's only so much that, with so many play, or so far that it can go. Because, um, again, every, every mock draft out there has everything all figured out, what's going to happen. And quite honestly, I, I don't believe much of any of them. So, um, you know, we, we pick it four. That means we don't know what's going to happen at one, two, and three. So, you know, I think people have conversations, hey, if, if this happens or if so-and-so is available here, then maybe we can talk and it would look something like this. But, you know, ultimately there's still a lot of unknown and really there will be until we're on the clock um, that, that Thursday night in April. So. Will you stay open for business right up until your, your turn to pick? Like a guy, you can say sorry. I'm, I'm good. There'll be a big neon sign that says "open," and we'll. Uh, I don't think I don't like it blinking. That kind of messes with my eyes. But yeah, we're uh, we're always going to be listening. You know, I think you know we'll, we'll always have the conversation. You know, uh, we may not get to a point where the deal makes sense, whether it's at four or uh, anywhere we're picking. But we're always going to have the conversation, and if it makes sense and it. Um, if it's attractive to uh, building our team, and then it's something that we'll certainly consider no matter where we're at in the draft. Did you, with, with free agency, I, I know you guys have the meetings ahead of time where you're talking about players, but are you, are you active in making the decisions on who is being targeted, or is it more like, hey, I know we're probably going to be going after X position or Y position, and, and then you get some kind of phone call that says, okay, we're bringing this guy in. Yeah, mine and I are in lockstep with everything that we do. Um, there, will, there will be some times where, um, hey, the, the landscape changed. Take a peek at this guy, because that happens, you know, and that's cool. But yeah, we, uh, we kind of collaborate on all that. And then I tell him all the time, hey, man, like what will the coaches, we don't have to, you know, and he wants the opinions of guys. So, um, but we trust with what him and his staff are doing, and he's making us a better team uh, every day. Uh, you mentioned the timing, of course, with DJ. Is that also the situation with Jonathan Ledbetter? Yeah, real similar. Yeah, Howard, real similar. Just the timing of the injury. Um, you know, uh, Led's working through some things, and yeah, I would say that was a, a consideration as well. Yeah. Can you both shed some light on kind of the major differences between when you were both coming in last year and now this offseason? Absolutely, yeah. So we, we actually had, have talked about this. Um, you know, I think last year um, it felt like we were on a treadmill that was about, you know, 45 degrees, set at 10 miles an hour, and we were just – we were going and it just – we could never catch up. You know, it felt like we were – we were constantly just trying to get to the point where we felt caught up. And so, you know, I think the difference is this year is that there's still a huge amount of work to do and that work doesn't go away, but uh, the timeline of that work is where it's supposed to be. So, you know, we knew, the coaches knew when their free agency uh, assignments were going to be and when those meetings were going to be. Then they knew when their draft list was going to be and when those meetings are going to be. And they knew when 30 visits are going to be. And so everything now is on the timeline that it should be. Uh, there still is certainly um, an urgency to what we're doing. Um, there's still um, some days it seems like an in insurmountable amount of work, but at least now we know what's coming um, on the timeline that is our structures and processes are in place. So to me, that's last year, again, felt like we were playing catch up. This year, hey, still a lot of work to do, but we kind of have a better picture of where that's going to come right um, along down the line. You feel that same way that Jonathan considering last year at this time you were on the job for about a month? Yeah, yeah, I, w I would say that. I think, um, you know, I think what's cool is, is a year of growth. You know what I mean? Being in that job, in that role, um, being together all at one staff and kept a lot of the guys, the same guys together, I think that's cool because you got to grow and learn from what we did last year. Um, but I tell people, oh, how much more comfortable are you this year? Not, I mean, there's a sense of urgency. I live on the edge of my seat. You know what I mean? So 
Um, the things that need to get done, they need to get done at a high level to improve us. I always say the clock's ticking, you know what I mean? And, and that's, that's not like wins and losses, it is, but it's, I know like in the next three days, I have to watch these so many players and have a good opinion on them. Like that's like to do right now, checklist. Like I gotta get out of here right now, guys, because if I don't, I'm gonna be behind the eight ball here. You know what I mean? So it's things like that. What Monty just talked about, it's, it's um, you feel a little more comfortable because you know what's kind of, you know, what's going on and how we've decided to do things. Um, but the sense of urgency is high and um, you gotta be on it. You know, every day. Speaking of clocks ticking, we'll take two more. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Monty, you talked about uh, the draft uh, in terms of receiver depth. There's a lot of great players that should be available first and second round, even further. But the different type of players that these prospects are, you in general, talk about what you see out of that group. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, I think receiver is a, a, a good example of. Um, you know, they they come in different shapes and sizes. Um, you know, ultimately we we sometimes can overcomplicate uh, football, and we've talked about this. But you know, a receiver's job is to get open and to catch the ball, and so they look different, they run different. They're big, they're small, but in the end of the day, if the guy can get open and catch the ball, he's gonna he's gonna bring value. So. You know, I think there's there's a number of guys in this year's draft um, at receiver that can do that. Um, you know, and I think they they come from big schools, small schools. Um, some are big, some are small. Some run ran real fast. Some didn't run as fast. So, um, you know, it's a good group. It's a good deep group of guys to work through, um, and we'll continue to do that just right up until draft time. But um, it is a good group this year. Kyler in the past has given his suggestions or feedback as far as which players he likes in the draft. Are you getting a lot from your players and coaches alike about who they think you should take in this draft? I haven't, uh, I haven't gone over Kyler's mock draft yet. Uh, you know, we'll, I'm sure we'll, we'll get to that at some point. <laughs> um, but no, you know, I think that is one thing that, that, um, that is beneficial and whether it's, you know, Kyler's probably getting a little long in the tooth, but some of our, uh, some of our rookies that we have and the first and second year players, they, they have personal relationships with some of these players that are coming out this year. And so, you know, there's no better uh, source than firsthand guys who have been in the locker room with guys. And so, you know, we're going to ask, we're going to ask guys that are on our team and get their impression on, on what it's like to have that guy as a teammate, both, you know, in the locker room, on the practice field, what kind of worker they are. Um, so that's a resource that we definitely use. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're gonna use every resource that we can to, to get through the draft process and um, anything that can help us you know, get the right people for this team, it's, uh, it's something that we're gonna use.